call me a geek, but uh, whenever I join a new boat, I like to check out the safety equipment. And the purpose of this is to investigate the life rafts, particularly the fact that they're in service and how to deploy them should the need arise. This may seem a bit of an exaggeration, but it is a very important thing to know how to do. Right, hello again. You're joining us today on the car ferry Pride of York, um, leaving Zeebrugge in Belgium, and we're heading to Hull. You can't see much in the horizon, just a load of lights. Very exciting. This is a set of three life rafts on a hanging slope, as you can see. Um, you may think it's very simple that once the life rafts are released, they simply roll down a slope into the sea, inflate, owl singing or dancing, Bob's your uncle. It's never that easy, of course. Um, first off, if we look here, you can't see it because it's dark, but there's a ramp at the end of the life raft stream. That needs to be released and folded flat, which is done by this slip pulley here. Here is the slip pulley that I meant to talk about. I'm not going to pull it because um, because I don't want the ramp to go down. When that's released, this ramp here folds down over the sea and you can potentially release the life raft. If we stand back a bit, you will see that each life raft is held in place by a strap that goes over the top. This strap is held in position by two units. Let's go under car one end of the strap here, the other end of the same strap ha. To manually release the life raft, either end of this strap must be released. This one here, the manual end, has another quick release shackle on it here. Pull the release, the life raft will roll. This bit under here, which we see here, come on, focus. I'm struggling with poor light, is the more interesting bit. Let's take a closer look at that. This unit here is called a hydrostatic release unit. The black bulb contains a diaphragm. When enough water pressure pushes the diaphragm, it uh, releases a spring which allows a sharp blade to cut this rope, thereby releasing this end of this retaining strap. If one end of the retaining strap is released, the life raft is free. Now, the intention of the hydrostatic release unit is to release the life raft if the ship sinks, meaning that once it gets to about five to 10 meters of water depth, this hydrostatic release unit will operate and the life raft will float to the surface. You will note that even if the hydrostatic release unit operates, this line here is attached to the other end of the hydrostatic release unit, which is still attached to the ship. If we follow this line, we find that it goes into the life raft. This is because this line is what is called the painter. Even if the life raft is launched manually, and particularly if it is launched automatically, the painter remains temporarily attached to the ship. When the life raft floats to the surface, a tug on the painter line, either by you on the surface of the ship by pulling it at this end that you have, or the ship by pulling it as it sinks and the life raft as it floats, will force the life raft to inflate and open up. At that point, the buoyancy on the life raft will be greater than the buoyancy on the sinking ship, and the weak link here, which is the red plastic component in front of my finger, will break, allowing the painter to come free. At the point that the painter is free, the life raft will be on the surface of the water and inflated, and you are able to get in it. However, it is far more desirable to board the life raft from the surface rather than jump into the sea and then attempt to swim into it. Therefore, the painter should be retained on board if at all possible. Obviously, if the ship has already sank, then that is not an option open to you. So, to summarize, the preferred method for releasing these life rafts is to do so from the deck. First, 
release the ramp that is holding the life raft in as a secondary securing system using the quick release shackle on the ramp. Second, pull the quick release shackles on the life rafts themselves. You will need to do this in order, obviously, starting one, two, three. The life rafts will then cascade down the side of the ship into the water, where, should they fail to inflate immediately, a sharp tug on the painter will cause them to do so. At this point, the life rafts can be manoeuvred closer towards the ship, and a means of entry into the life raft can be affected. It is much more desirable to climb down a rope ladder or similar into the life raft, rather than to throw yourself into the sea and then attempt to swim in one. This will make you very, very cold, and in Northern Europe you probably won't make it. Apropos gaining entrance to these things, if they are in the water and you are up here, you will note underneath this blue tarpaulin there is a rope ladder. You will need to manipulate the painter in order to bring the life raft close in to gain access. It's also maybe advisable to join several life rafts together in the water once you are there in. The less ideal situation is that the ship has already sunk. You find yourself in the water and you are hoping for the best, in which case at some point a life raft will emerge from the frothy deep and self-inflate in your vicinity. As we have discussed, the hydrostatic release unit is what makes this possible. When you board a ship, Familiarise yourself with the safety systems on board. It is highly likely that a controlled evacuation would make use of these large closed capacity lifeboats. These are to be operated only by skilled crew. However, in the event of an unforeseen emergency, these self-contained life rafts may be your only option, and it is up to you to know how to use them. Note that the crew are still responsible for them if they are around, however this may not be the case and you may have to step up to the mark. Okay, so when you get onto a ship, read the instructions, listen to what the crew has to say, observe the safety equipment that is there, learn, inwardly digest and be prepared. That way you're far more likely to have a safe and successful trip. Unfortunately, people still do die in shipwrecks, even in the Europe, although not as common as in some other parts of the world. And a lot of the time it is because people just didn't know what to do and or did what they were told by other people who didn't know what they were supposed to be doing, i.e. badly trained or poorly motivated or panicking crew. Rope ladder, rope ladder, bar. Unfortunately, because I don't want to end up in prison, I can't do a live demonstration of how to do these things. But take it from me, I have trained to use these things in the past, and it's not that complicated. What I've shown you today will work. Please only use it in an emergency, obviously. But if it does help you and there is an emergency, you're welcome. Have a nice day. As ever, thanks for watching. See you next time.